Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to our video series on applications of dynamic programming and economics. In this video, we're going to solve the planners problem, this time using guess and verify as our method of solution. Let's go. So let's define our problem mathematically. As you can see, it's just the usual setup where we're maximizing uh, this utility function over a infinite lifetime subject to uh, these constraints. We have our resource constraint, we have our production function, we have our law of motion, and we're going to assume that our initial capital stock is greater than zero. Uh, for simplicity, we're just going to assume away uh, uh, depreciation. Really, actually, we're assuming the most extreme case of depreciation, really, uh, that uh, each period, uh, I guess, you know, all previous periods capital is going to be destroyed. So, in terms of solving this model, we're going to follow the six steps, the same as I showed in our cake eating problem. So step number one, we're going to set up a Bellman equation. The step number two is we're going to take a guess for what our value function kt, vkt is for our Bellman and use that for the next period. Uh, take the first order condition to solve for kt plus one, and we're going to put a little tilde over it to go and show it's an intermediate one over there. Uh, step number four is we're going to set our initial guess equal to our Bellman equation evaluated at its maximum. Step number five is that we're going to identify our coefficients from our guess as, as a result of getting uh, it from step number four. And step number six is that we're going to use the coefficients to identify our policy functions from kt plus one tilde. So step number one, set up the Bellman equation. Bam, that's just what it is corresponding to our sequential problem from before is that we're going to maximize this log a k t theta minus k t plus one so that over there is just solved by going and rearranging our uh, resource constraint plus theta times the value function in the next period as a function of capital stock in the next period step number two is we're going to take a guess for what v k t is going to be in our bellman equation so as we can see, our, our guess is going to be C1 plus C2 times ln KT. Uh, it should be noted that a good guess is going to be one that is similar to our utility function. Summing this in for VKT plus 1, we go and get the following. So step number three is that we're going to take the first order conditions of this value function and solve for KT plus 1 tilde. Uh, you know, taking the first order condition, as we see over here, and rearranging, we go and get the following. That is kt plus 1 tilde is going to be equal to beta c2 all over 1 plus beta c2 times a kt theta. Step number four is that we're going to take our initial guess and set it equal to our Bellman equation evaluated at its maximum, which is going to be this kt plus 1 tilde. So we're going to go and have this whole mess of algebra that we're going to just have to solve and work all the way through. Uh, if we simplify these, this body of equations, right, with the sum of all the constant terms embodied in R, we go and get the following, that C1 plus C2 K, L, ln KT, right, that's our initial guess, is going to be equal to theta times 1 plus beta C2 times ln KT plus R, which is our, all of our constant terms. So step number five uh, from there is that we're going to identify our coefficients from our guess. So it's clear from our relationship that it must be true that uh, that for the case uh, C1 must be equal to R and C2 must be equal to theta times 1 plus beta C2. Uh, for the exact value of C2, we go and we solve that as theta all over 1 plus beta theta. So step number six is that we're going to use the coefficients from this estimate over here to identify our exact policy function and that exact policy function is just done by taking c2 and subbing it into kt plus one uh tilde and you know we just have a little bit more algebra and we get this thing all the way at the bottom which is beta theta times our production function so what's interesting about this is that this is the same measure that we get uh, as our value function iteration method. So um, I guess, you know, the moral of the story is that we can get a really good, really good measure, you know, almost, you know, the same measure, or in this case, exactly the same measure, if we have a well-defined guess for our policy function. So we can actually attain the same sort of results. So I hope this video helps. I will see you 
hopefully in another video. Take care.